another edition of KernHighNetwork.com's live exclusive coverage of high school sports here in the Kern High School District here in the Bakersfield proper area and all the surrounding communities. Vance Paul and Rick Van Horn here. We are here at Frontier High School, the penultimate week. Next week is the last week of regular season, Rick. So tonight, a big game, Frontier hosting Garces. Who would have thunk it? Six, eight weeks ago when we started putting these schedules together that this would be such a crucial game. The possibility exists for Garces if they were able to pull out a win tonight. And based on some other things that happened next week, Garces could win this SWIL. The Titans start out 5-0, and ran in a couple of different uh, situations in their season. But as we see this team bust out of this huddle here, out of the big uh, Titans inflatable end zone over there, they're as fired up as ever, Rick Van Horn. Big game tonight. It is, it is. I'm excited. We haven't seen Garces yet this year. This is our third time seeing Frontier, so we kind of know what to expect. They like to run the ball. They're going to throw it when they have to. But uh, I'm excited to see this uh, Garces group and this Isaiah Martin. One of the games you were calling on another campus, I happened to cover Centennial Garces about two or three weeks ago, so we did see Isaiah Martin. We did see Joseph Campbell. We did see um, Steve Rowland on that defensive end, the big 6'4", thin guy that gets in there and disrupts the, uh, the offense of any opposing team. But you're right. Tonight's a different type of a game when you talk about Frontier High School. Uh, they started out 5-0. and Coach Bandy starting over this, taking over this program for Rich Cornford. And then all of a sudden, they, they run into a couple of hiccups. They have to kind of reassess where they're at. Garces starts out 0-5. The Drillers go over to their field for Tobias Field for the uh, opening week of regular season play. And they yeah. upset the Drillers in a huge, huge win. And it sets the table for uh, tonight with so many implications. First of all, if you're the visiting Garces Rams, Rick Van Horn, what's on your mind as you go on the road tonight to this Frontier uh, football field? Well, the first thing and foremost is you got to stop t- Ty Johnson, the uh, running back for Frontier who's who's over 1,000 yards already. Um, and then the second thing is you can't let J.J. Flores loose. This is a kid that's uh, both running the ball, catching the ball. He's averaging 15 yards a crack every time he touches it. Almost rushed for 470 yards already. And as we always do here on KernHighNetwork.com, we stop and pause with our home field and our home band. And let's honor our country and enjoy the national anthem along with everybody else. Once again, everybody, welcome to KernHighNetwork.com's live coverage of high school football here. We're at Frontier High School. The Titans hosting the Garces Rams. Garces, not the biggest roster. You look over, you see about 24 to 26 guys. Uh, Rick, you, on the opposite side, you see Frontier with this big uh, roster that they have. Uh, but when that ball goes up, um, it's going to all be about second to the last week of the league and how much they're going to put on the table here uh, for these guys to eat. Are they going to give Isaiah Martin that ball a ton? Are they going to put it in the air with Joe Campbell? Um, what's Frontier's um, playbook going to look like in the third quarter after they make adjust, uh, adjust adjustments? So with you, who has played at the highest levels and coached at every level here in Kern County, uh, coaching matchup here between Bandy and Dees, your thoughts on the coaching? Well, Bandy's a rookie. First year, first year head coach, like you said. And I said Gas, so Coach Gas, sorry. Coach Gas at, from <laughs> Garces. Right. He's got a lot of experience, especially Southern California experience, so uh, defensive-minded. 
Very, you know, he was a linebacker at Fresno State. Uh, coming down here, you know, Frontier's not going to come in here and bully these guys. Garces is lined up against uh, St. Saint, Saint uh, Saint John Bosco's this year, who was the number three team in the nation at that time. So they're not going to be impressed or intimidated by the Frontier group. Dean of Students is also the head coach, A.J. Gass, athletic director for Garces, Joan Finch, the assistant principal, Deborah Sikowski. There's that name. I knew I saw it. Assistant principal, Guy Dees, baseball coach, and the principal, Micah Peck, at Garces Memorial High School for Frontier, our host. Principal Vicki Thompson, Assistant Principal of Instruction, Carla Stallworth, the Assistant Principal of Administration, Dustin Green, Athletic Director, the incomparable Mike Gibson, Activity Director, Lisa Bolton. So looking forward to a great night here. Um, Titan Tom, uh, another one of our colleagues that calls games, is the public address announcer here tonight. So our other game in Kernville, Kern Valley, uh, our main man, Kyle Wiley, took up Kevin Willie and Rich Cornford and Cornford's brother, up the road into the yeah. valley, and it's Kern Valley Roseman, our other game. We've got Mr. Bentley here. We're riding with the Bentley in the back seat today. He's uh, going to be heavily, heavily involved in typing out everything we need to know. Antonio, our director, producer, IT doctor, and Julian. If you didn't know, I've been giving Julian some lessons on how to stay fit and work out, and I've, I've elicited my first guffaw guttural laughter here on top of the Frontier Titan newsstand. If you didn't know, uh, Julian is our camera man, but he could also double as Mr. America. Well, Rick, <clears throat> great football game tonight. Next week is a week in months itself. We'll talk about that later, that final week in uh, the regular season. A lot can happen tonight. A lot of storylines tonight around the community. We'll talk about that. But we're about to get this football kicked off. You know what on tonight? Foothill out south. How will south rebound from that Hail Mary last play of the game win by Highland last week? Miramonte at Highland. I think Highland's going to Independence gets past East. Next week, we have an undefeated league championship between Ridge Units West at Golden Valley. Liberty Freedom Bowl, and we just mentioned Roseman. Thank you, Dr. Bentley. Huh, Kyle Wiley. Just the opposite, two and six. But they're two wins. Lead. I'm two and two. So I'm ready. Everybody ready to go up here? Julian, Antonio, Bentley, Tom, live exclusive coverage. Bias at the nine-yard line, looking for some room. Big contact early versus uh, sophomore pumped up out there. A lot of contact, not bad field position for Garces. This is on this roster. I think I can. Done a good job managing this this for Garces. First down, Austin Giggy, and look at this, a 12-yard gain, first chuck out of the game. Second and three, they got a first down, which is even better. And that, by the way, he bobbled it and was able to, to get rid of it. So Giggy comes out here with Hebbard and Jackson Brooks. So a strong left side of the line of scrimmage, three receivers out there. Campbell in the shotgun, stands at the 32-yard. Another bad snap. Martin picks it up off the ground. And don't know if it was even supposed to be pa uh, snapped to Campbell. If not, it was a wildcat snap, but not a very good one. So two shaky snaps, and that's a loss of a yard, second and 11 here. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good to see you. My bodyguard is here, so I'm good. I'm good. I've got my jujitsu bodyguard. Nothing's going to go bad now. How about this? Second and 10. Ball is at the 30. Eight yard line, Campbell looking for a good snap here on this third play of the game. Isaiah Martin on his left hip, three receivers to the far right, the ball right in the middle between the hash marks. Campbell in trouble and running, tries to cut back up, gets nothing, maybe a yard or two. Quarterback keeper the entire way, possible pitch, but didn't look like it. Now, Frontier took away Isaiah Martin, which they may do all night long. <laughs> they want Campbell carrying the ball, they don't want Martin carrying the ball. Good job by Frontier, brings up third and eight now. They got what they wanted. Joseph not throwing it and Isaiah not running it. And that brings up third and long, about third and eight to go here. Balls on the 40 yard line. Directionally, Garst is going right to left. Geographically, they're going due north, straight towards Shafter. Third and eight, Campbell drops back. Little soft roll to his left, fires down the sidelines. Oh, nice play, tried to thread the needle. Well defended out there by Carson Woodholm. Incomplete, fourth down, Garces will punt. So after a first and 12, or first and 10 where they picked up 12, three straight plays, nothing happening. Fourth down and eight. 
<clears throat> and only one carry so far by Isaiah Martin in that first series. J.J. Flores, we told you, 15 yards. Every time he catches the ball, 15 yards he's N averaging. Another low snap. Here's the punt. Will Flores run? He bubbles it. Ball's on the ground. Fumble. Oh. Fumble. Looks like Garza might have picked it up at the 28-yard line. He saw some daylight. He wanted to go with it, but he never had control. It wasn't as if he had it and then dropped it. Never really had control. Flo drops the football. Garces now first and 10 at the frontier 28-yard line. I think we were all waiting for some type of exciting run back. Didn't have the rock with him. And, Rick, you and I talked about this pregame off camera. Any opportunity that Garces can get on the road against frontier team is going to be a major plus, and they have one right now. They come back out, and Isaiah Bell, one of three receivers down here on the short side of the field, so they stacked up the short side. In motion goes Bell. They toss it to Bell. He's looking for some downhill blocking. He cuts back up against the grain and gets to the 16-yard line, and that's a big first down on a first down. Nice play. It was. It was. A little fly sweep there. <clears throat> Frontier did a good job setting the edge, but their pursuit didn't. Didn't get there, so uh, Bell had a good good run there, good for about a uh, first down. All the Frontier Titan cheerleaders tonight wearing beanies and long sleeved clothes, but it's 82 degrees. What is this weather all about, man? First and 10, ball on the Frontier, 16-yard line. Campbell has Martin on his left hip. He gave him a quick little whisper before the snap. He says, I'm going to hand it to you, and ouch, the Titans read it. Gobbled him up very quickly. A couple of big hits in there early. And one of the first guys to get in there is Austin Mahan. Big hit by the junior. Eight and a half to go here first quarter. Vance Palm alongside Rick Van Horn, our director producer tonight, Antonio. Dr. Todd Bentley in the back. Making sure we get all of our scores and updates and tweeting and Julian on camera tonight. Second and nine, Campbell looks. Has a man open. Should be a touchdown. Of the, oh, he overthrows him. Had a man wide open. Now, I don't have four on my roster. How about you? I don't think anybody has four on their roster. I don't know if Titan Tom has number four. No number four, no. so we're going to call him tonight John yes. Smith. Unless we can get Is some type Le of insight. Would that be LeBravian Austin? I'm working on I'm efforting, as they say. Okay, all right. Good call by Garces. Man, oh, man, wide open. Wide open. They missed the opportunity right there. Third and nine, Campbell. Hard count, and some flags fly. And we saw this. Um, you were at another game, but Cornford and I saw this. Um, Centennial Garces game, and uh, Joe Campbell was really, really nice um, with the hard counts and changing up his – um, his entire cadence, and it was just a really, really good deal there. What you may have heard was the voice of God whispering in my ear. LeBravian Austin. Number four is Austin. Yeah. There. Austin actually got hurt at San Joaquin Memorial and, and, uh, and been out for, missed about three games. Campbell decides to keep. Cuts Whoa. right at the middle of the football field. An absolutely huge seam right in the middle of the field between the hash marks. Campbell goes to his right. Everybody thought he would pitch. He tucks it in and picks up a huge first down. First and goal from the four-yard line for the Garces Rams. Campbell did a good job. You know, they're taking away Martin, which is a smart thing to do. Make Campbell beat you. Make the young sophomore beat you. Run play to the right side. Picks up a couple. Should be second and goal from the two. Under eight minutes to go here in the first quarter. You are watching KernHighNetwork.com's live exclusive coverage of high school sports in the Kern High School District. We are at Frontier. Second to the last week of regular season football play, and it's a second and goal from the two-yard line. Campbell gives the ball to Martin. Can Martin muscle his way in? He is close, but he does not get in. Oh, knocking on the door, but it shut on him at about the one yard line. Gonna be third and goal from, oh, they actually pushed him back a little. Got it at the one. I thought he was at the one inch line, but they've got it at the one. What do you think here, coach? 
Well, you get, you got Isaiah Martin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him the rock again. Campbell goes right behind center. And uh -oh. movement everywhere, and Isaiah Martin, and I think that might have been on the quarterback. The quarterback might have stalled that one just yeah. a hair because even Isaiah Martin was off to the races, running and getting out to the right. So I now it's yeah. tough to say, but I think Isaiah was going to go in motion to his right there. Ooh, pushes it back. That's a huge play. Now it's third and goal from the seven. 7 7.07 left here in the first quarter. No score. Garces stalled on their first drive, punted, and picked up a fumble at the 27 for Frontier. And now they give it to Martin. Can Martin make the foot race into the end zone? Flag on the play. So there's laundry right at the eight-yard line, and it's a stretch play out to that pylon. So pretty decent guess that it's a hold. I would imagine. So Garces stubbing their toe right now. Garces definitely needed seven out of this drive here. You know, they're, they're going to end up, might be getting three out of this. Peter Dellis is the, is the kicker that ended up kept beating Bakersfield High a couple weeks ago on the last play of the game. So we know he's his range is 32, 35 yards. At least. Ball's on the far hash, the right side hash, one-on-one -on -one down here in the corner. So it's LeBrevin Austin in wide open space with only one person to guard him. They put the formation into the sideline. The ball's on the hash. Uh, you know, Austin's their guy out here. They're going to take their chances, I think. Campbell has Martin on his left hip. On the short side of the field, he has three receivers, but he has Austin and all the space out here to the near side. Campbell wants to step, fires across to Austin. No, it's not. It's a touchdown, and oh, they're going to say no, incomplete. No, no. And the Garces coaches are going to say, hey, that's a touchdown. They strung wow. it out there, and Zachary Hebbard, we thought, had it in his hands long enough for. Let's see, we're going to. One. Wow. Well, he you got know two what? feet down. What a call. And Zachary Hebbard had what was a beautiful, we thought, touchdown catch, but the referees right on top of it did not have that second foot down. We do yeah. not believe now. Now here's Dallas for a 31-yarder. High snap. They get it down. Can Dallas get it up and through? He does. It's good. A nice start for Garces. They're up 3-0, and we have some early scores. Independence leads East 7-6. South's pulling ahead of Foothill right now, 7-0. Highland leads Miramonte 7-0. And the Vikings of West over Golden Valley 6-0. And for those of you that for some reason... Need to know this score. Ouch. Houston still up on the Dodgers. 5-3, top of the six. So. It definitely looked like he had two feet down. I but thought I, so, too. You know, I and, and you don't have to make a football move when you're in the end zone. Once you catch it, ball game, touchdown. But um, referee didn't see it that way. They get three, though. They get three. Good start for Garces. Capitalized. They got something. Now, look. It was third and goal from the one fine, so if you're Coach Gass, you're really wishing you had that six, but it is what it is. They got three. Well, you got to give Frontier all the credit there. You get Isaiah Martin, and he had three shots, actually four shots inside the five-yard line, and Frontier uh, defense rose up and, and held him. Well, that's a great point, Rick. Rick Van Horn, longtime partner. Good to see you tonight, buddy. Good to be here. So Frontier has not run a play from the line of scrimmage yet. And there's six and a half to go here in the first quarter. Here's the kickoff. It's going to be taken at about the 10-yard line. And again, it's the dangerous J.J. Flores. He's looking to cut up against the grain. Some nice downfield blocking. He gets to the 50, brought out at the 46-yard line, caught finally by Bell. But that is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Titans. First and 10 inside Rams territory. You know, we've been saying this all year. You know, there's certain guys around town you just don't kick to. And guess what? JJ's one of them. So, if you're Garces, what you know? What you wonder what they're thinking? Don't kick to the fast guy. Very simple. <laughs> you know. Okay. It's like when your mom tells you, "Hey, the stove's hot. What do you do? You touch it anyway." And then blame her. Yeah. Hard count. No call. 
to run play here to the near side. A strong run play, and that's Ty Johnson. So TJ, his first carry, picks up a 15-yard gain or a 14-yard gain, first and 10 frontier, just like that. Six night go here in this four, first quarter, 3 nothing. Garces with a field goal lead. We talked about Ty Johnson being the, the bread and butter of this team. A couple weeks ago, we talked about, you know, the three top running backs in town. Two of them are here. It was Isaiah Martin and Ty Johnson. Sammy Stewart over there at Liberty is probably the third. So uh, we're in for a fast game, if nothing else. Floor is in motion. They hand it to him. He gets stretched out to the far side. Some great job of containment by the Garces Rams there. So a really, really nice job. And they actually push him back two or three yards. Great job by Garces. By the way, quarterback Dusty Montano wears number eight for the Titans. Dusty Montano. Second and 12. Ty Johnson, the lone back. Everybody packed in tight except for Flores right down here below us. One-on-one -on -one for Flores. They might want to go that way. They don't. They float one out. Incomplete pass. Nice coverage out there by Daniel Tobias. So that'll bring up third and 12. That's going to be it's going to be a perfect situation now. That Frontier's got a big, good tight end, Shelton, number 88. We had him the, the first game, Liberty Frontier. He looked great. They were throwing the ball to him. <clears throat> Since then, he's only had three catches on the on the season. That's Caden Shelton, number 88. Now right down below us here at the bottom of your screen, J.J. Flores on a third and 12. Montano drops straight back. Wants the double pump, doesn't get it. Or the double mm -hmm. move, I should say, on the pump fake. Doesn't get it at all. No reaction. Incomplete pass. A long, and was there a penalty? I don't see any yellow out there. No, there's going to be a punt. We think, we think. They're at that funkification place at about the 38-yard line, but oof. Maybe a pooch punt? Never know. It's fourth and 12, Rick. Fourth and 12. You're in that no man's land, out of, out of the reach of your kicker, but yet. They break out of the huddle. Montano in the short shotgun, but he has... Ty Johnson right behind him. No indication whatsoever of a punt. Maybe he will. We'll see. He drops back. They're going to go for it. He flings it out here to the near side, and it is incomplete. Either way, Garces football, smart actually, to let it go to the ground. First and 10, Garces, and they drive stalls for the Titans. 3-0, 525 left here in this first quarter. Garces up by a field goal. Their first series, I think we only saw Ty Johnson carry it once there. We've so the premier running backs in town aren't, uh, they haven't got started yet. That's the voice of Rick Van Horn, BHS driller, BC Renegade, UNLV running rebel, two authors, one on BHS football, one on BC football. And he is my partner tonight here at Frontier High School. Garces takes over, ball at their own 37-yard line. Campbell rolls to his left, wants to throw, finally throws behind Bell, sorry, not Bell, Austin, and flag on the play right in the middle of the football field about the 46-yard line. You know, Campbell, being a sophomore, throws the ball pretty well. You know, he comes from a line of his cousins, Byron Campbell, former uh, quarterback for Liberty High School, and then you had Blake Campbell, Blake Campbell, who was a actually quarterback for uh, these Garces Rams a couple of years ago. His older brothers... Then Grant Campbell, linebacker for Baylor yeah. and a BC Renegade, and, and also uh, the Lumberjack. Jack, who is a uh, tight end for Cornell. Uh, Cornell. So, <clears throat> Joseph Campbell is the quarterback, his grandfather, also a Joe. So, for those of you wondering why I call him Joe Daddy, I got that permission. I asked his grandpa one time, hey, when he gets up into the big leagues, what am I calling him? Yeah. He said, no doubt. I said, what do you mean? He goes, Joe Daddy. I said, okay, you got it. A lot of football in that Campbell name in this town. Well, first and forever for Campbell. They hand the ball off to Martin, and he is scooped up very quickly, thrown down, and a one-man job out there. Man, what a big play. And that's a nice big tackle out there by, I think it's Blaine Coleman. I thought it was. Let's see what Titan Tom Bellomi says. 
on a first and forever. It's now second and forever. No gain whatsoever. He's actually kind of quiet tonight. He's saving it for halftime. He's okay. going to halftime guess. He's going to keep his. He want to keep <laughs> his. his he voice. wants to keep his pipes for the halftime. <laughs> and he's got pipes, I tell you. Second and twenty-five. Campbell stands with Martin back there. Three receivers out here to this near side. Takes a look left, right, then left. Going to get brought down from behind at the 19-yard line. Ball was already on the ground, but, hey, Alexander Tyler with the sack on the ankles. And one of the big guys for the Rams are down. Looks like Robles. Yeah, boy, they're 6'2", 247-pound junior, Adam Robles, and he is... One of their key, key guys. So he goes down with 420 left in this first quarter. We'll take a short break. Everybody catch our breath. We'll be back in a moment. Garces leads 3-0, but now it's third and 31. Back right after this. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to... All right, third and 31, Robles up and off the field, which is great. Just walked off on his own recognizances, which is nice. Now third and super, super long for Joseph Campbell. And the Titans, will they rush three? Will they rush four? Three and a half, basically. Martin, strong run right up between the hash marks. Gets to about the 27-yard line. And that will bring up, oh, flag on the play. But it's back in that range where I doubt it's against Frontier. It is a hold. And if you're... Coach Bandy, you just declined it, and let's put the football to us, or do you want to march him back even further? I think. Decline, they're going to bring up fourth down and, and probably get a punt punt from Garces. So they're going to get the ball back with about three minutes left in this first quarter. As an armchair quarterback, it's a win-win for Coach Bandy. You decide to put it yeah. back even further, go yeah. ahead and do it again. But right now we're, we want to get our offense back on this football field, and so Garces is going to punt. And now it's Grant Lee to return the punt. It's not Flores back there. Dallas, high, booming punt, as high as us. Ball bounces at the 47-yard line. First and 10. Didn't get a lot of distance, but got some good height, good hang time there. Oh, we got a flag down. That might be a sideline warning, because it's It was thrown way over here by the longtime right. veteran official, Bob Williams. Sideline warning. Why, wow, Bob, he, he called Frank Gifford's games. Is that Bob Williams down there? Oh, I thought it was. Oh. I thought, it's not Bob. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna, it's, uh oh, my phone, yeah, I should just turn it off. I should just turn it off. I don't know. Maybe this is, might, but he, he looks taller than that. They've got a, a great used, crew down there. I used to give him all really? kinds of heck. Man. Really? He used to like to throw those flags. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go, third, uh, for 340 left here in this first quarter. Titans trying to put something together on offense. They hand the ball off, and it's right between the tackles, and a good, strong, strong run up there, and right through the gap is Ty Johnson, and he was hit at the line of scrimmage and did all the work to get 11 yards. I've, I've liked Ty Johnson since last year when he was at Ridgeview. Running the ball, he's tough, he's got some good speed, good acceleration, and he's a load to bring down. He picked up 11, so it's first and 10. Two backs back there with Montano. Montano hands the ball off again to Ty Johnson. Gets stretched out by the Garces Rams, and great, great pursuit out there. Travion Bell doing all the work, the 6'2", 275-pound junior. Oh, what a big, big play. Pushes him back eight yards. On to the 
Under three to go, first quarter. Titans trying to put something together on offense. Some spark, and then it'll back it up. You'll see some spark. It'll back it up. We've got J.J. Flores down here on the 50-yard line, bottom of your screen. Montano looks at him, immediately goes right to him. Nice pitch, nice catch, and a big hit. Peter Dellis, the punter kicker, who will go down in Garces Lore for the big field goal to beat BHS in overtime with another big tackle. How's that? Punt for us. Have game-winning kicks for us against the Drillers. Oh, and guard one of the most electrifying players in the Valley. Third and 12, Rick. I'm still waiting to see Shelton, that big tight end, 88. In motion, Flores. They fake the handoff to him. They go right up between the tackles, and they give it to Ty Johnson, and they do not pick it up, but the ball's going to be at about the 36, 37-yard line. Oh, the 38 now, and it's going to be fourth and... About six. Ooh, six a long, long six. Yeah. <laughs> and with 145 and counting here in this first quarter, Titans trail 3 nothing. So if you're Garces, if you can get out of this first quarter with a field goal lead, that's some nice momentum. Kobe Budak, and we're going to get a timeout, our first timeout of the game. We'll take it with them with 132. You're watching all of this on KernHighNetwork.com. Hope you're enjoying it. Back right after this with a buck 40 left here in this first quarter. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Welcome back after the break, everybody. Fourth and six for the Frontier Titans. Ball's on the 37 yard of Garces with 132 to go here. First quarter, KernHighNetwork.com, live exclusive coverage of football. Montagna drops back, looks left the whole way. Look at that's going to be the aforementioned big fella, Caden Uribe. He's up. A huge loss for the Titans. They never had a chance to get the football off. They did. That was a great job by Garces' defense there. Fourth down sack. This kid's a big kid. Uribe Caden. Caden's 6'2", six, six, two, 200 pounds. Frontier High School recently received three-star national chapter recognition. This is the highest award a chapter can receive. Congratulations, Mrs. Beechner and the entire program. Wow. So on fourth and six, they end up losing a bunch. And now all of a sudden, first and 10, ball exactly at the 50-yard line. They're coming after Campbell. He has a man. Oh, he pump fakes. Had the man for a second. Now Campbell's on the run. Floats one out here. Beautiful pass. And it is caught out there by Isaiah Bell. Ooh, for just a moment. He had Austin open down here again on the near side, but he cut around. Yeah. He uh, cut for the sidelines, his sidelines, yeah. and throws on the run for a nice first down. I tell you what, Campbell didn't look like a sophomore in that play. He looked like experience, calm quarterback with a, with a good arm. He did a great job that time. We're going to dip below the minute mark here in six seconds here in this first quarter. They break out of the huddle. Ball's on the far hash at the 39-yard line. Sorry, 34-yard line. Campbell has Martin back there on his left hip. Will they go to him? They do. Martin between the guards. Look at this strong run. Eight yards for Martin. Ball gets to the 26-yard line. That's what Frontier's got to gotta stop because if you get let Isaiah Martin get going, it could be a long night. Pick up of eight yards on the play. 
helps Campbell's case if I'm, Martin's game gets rolling. Yep. Second and two, so that was a gain of eight. Again, the ball's on the far hash up against the Garces sidelines. They're going right to left directionally. Campbell with a hard count. Nobody jumps. They give it to Martin again. This time he kicks it to the outside. He's met by some frontier Titans, but he picks up the first down. And they're going to move the sticks, and then that will do it for the first quarter. The score, 3 nothing right now. Garces up over the Frontier Titans, and I think they'll start the clock pretty much right now, and that should do it for the first quarter. Hope you're enjoying all of this on KernHighNetwork.com, live exclusive coverage of the Kern High School District. When we come back, second quarter action at Frontier. Garces leads 3 nothing. We're learning the different roles, what a game designer is, what they do, and how video games are made, and how to deconstruct them. We're also going to be teaching the hard skills, which includes learning the Unreal Engine. What the Unreal Engine is, is it's a game development tool that students will be able to use to make their very own video games. And this is something that actually industry professionals use every day to make uh, some of the top selling games. They're all the same size. You're all on the same plane. There's no undulating terrain or anything like that. Our instructor, he's really amazing. He encourages everybody. He's really fun and he makes learning fun. So they've got top of the line computers here and they're set up to excel. I would be surprised if other students their age coming out of high school would have anywhere near the level of expertise that these guys are going to have. Welcome back, everybody. Second quarter action here at Frontier High School. Now Garces directionally going left to right, heading right towards the lights over there at Liberty High School. Campbell fires across the middle, caught on a first and 10, and it's caught by Austin Giggy. They'll move the chains, the ball, up now to the seven-yard line. Some more scores around the county right now. East up over Independence, 13-7. South over Foothill, 21-0. Highland over Miramonte, 14-0. West ahead of Golden Valley, 12-6. North over McFarland by a touchdown, 7-0. The Drillers lead the Mustangs at Stockdale, 7-0. Tehachapi over Ridgeview, 7-0. Liberty leads Centennial, 7-0. And Roseman leading Kern Valley, 16-15 here. Oh, nice game up there. First and goal from the seven. Martin with the carry. Martin hit big at the three-yard line. And that's a big contact up there. A really, really heavy, hard hit. Stopped Martin right at the three-yard line. I thought for sure he might plow for some more. But no, it was a big, big hit out there. And one of the Titans that laid the wood was Kobe. But we have a... Number 15. Garrett Brackett down right now, and he's down at about the three-yard line, and he is in some pain. I don't know if it was Brackett that had that initial hit. If it was, that was big contact. It was Brackett. So the uh, the young man that's down right now, he and Isaiah Martin basically said, let's get it on at about the four-yard <laughs> line. And uh, Brackett is down, possibly just trying to catch some wind. Isaiah Martin, you might have some numbers on Rick. Uh, on Isaiah Rick, you know, you're you're looking at, like you mentioned in the pregame, came into tonight, 216 carries, 1,012 yeah. yards, um, averages 126 a game. Averages 27 carries a game. So, uh, you know, we're not keeping stats right now, but we've got a close, close tabs. He's probably around the 10 carry mark already, and we're not even in the uh, middle of the second quarter. Good to see the Frontier Titan, Garrett Brackett, get up. And uh, looks like he may be favoring the left side as he's getting helped off by the staff there. Big contact. And, you know, Martin had a full head of steam, Rick, and at the three-yard line, and Brackett pushed him back a yard. So big hit, big contact. 
Uh, but he's going to generally go off the sideline here, and it's going to be second and goal from the four-yard line here for the Rams. And they have a 3 nothing lead, and boy, would they like to get in now. Two backs back there, Rick. Second time they've been inside the five-yard line. Martin looking for some space, looking for some room, and a big run, and it's a touchdown. Garces Martin bangs his way in like a pinball into the end zone. Garces leads 9 nothing now. You mentioned it. they put two backs in the backfield. Now they put a lead blocker in that first series when they were last time they were down inside the five. It was just Campbell and, and Martin. This this time they put a lead blocker in front of Martin on a simple power play to the left, and uh, Martin did the rest. So here's Dallas to make it. On for the extra point, number 24, Peter Dallas. A 10-0 ball game, and he does. It's up and through, so with 11-10 uh, left here in the first half, there is a flag down. Um, see these guys discuss this and see what they come up with. It looked like it was gonna, it's going to be on against Garces. Well, they've cleared the field, so I would assume it's going to be marked off. Personal, Personal foul be... Personal foul called on Garces. Mm. Marked off on the kickoff. Okay, well. Ten to nothing right now. Garces over Frontier. Just underway here in the second quarter. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Rick Van Horn. Antonio's our director, producer. Todd Bentley running all things internet for us, keeping us posted and posting all our stuff. Julian's handling the camera. And Prime Minister Louis Amostoyakovich. Louis Amostoy collecting... Images for the Kern High School District tonight down about the five-yard line with his Olympic Size telephoto camera, lens. Yeah. Great to see Lewis down there. He's down there by the athletic director. Just having a good look at everything. So, hi, Lewis. He actually looks like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Don't tell him that. Yeah. You know, th these are two teams that are, once they get to the playoffs, they're both going to be in Division Two. And you see another matchup here in a couple weeks between these same two teams. Ball's going to be kicked off at the 25-yard 20, uh, line. Again, the cheerleaders tonight with a comfy, cozy theme with beanies and sweaters and long sleeves. And then we all showed up in 80-degree weather. Guess who gets it? And he muscles his way. A girl comes off the tee, floats over Flores, and you've got Ty Johnson. Pick your poison, eh, Rick? Right. Well, he got unplayed to the far side, the right side. Now in the second quarter, front our halftime guest, the public address announced on Swell Dude. Frontier, he'll take it. Good job with that hard count, getting Ridgeview off. He must have used it four or five times and to draw Ridgeview off. Second and nine turned into a second and four with that five marched forward. And, uh, oh, a nice tackle out there. He beautifully played roaming middle linebacker of Rafael Carvajal. Just read it perfectly and stopped him for about a one-yard gain. It looked like it was going to do move into some big yardage, but actually Carvajal playing a down lineman there. So now it's a big third down for Frontier, Rick. It is. It is. Third and three is what they're going to say. Ball on the Garces 43-yard line. Montano takes a look. Misdirection play. There's a nice big first down and the much-needed first down. The ball was in the hands of Ernest Jackson and EJ gets up to the 30. First down, Titans. Ball on the Rams 30-yard line. He looks a lot bigger up here than 5'11", 185, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. In motion, Flores right in front of Montano. First and 10, nine and a half to go in this first half. Ooh, broken play, and Garces all over it. A five-yard loss. Looked like Montano first was looking for his running back. Second was stumbling. Third said, I just got to take a loss and not lose this football. Good job by, uh, who was that, 16, P.J. Hernandez. Loss of five yards on the play. 
Brings up second and 15. We just dipped below the nine-minute mark. Somewhat of a who's who, an all-star cast up here high atop the Frontier announcer's booth. Don't have the green light to mention any names, so I won't, but goodness. Second and 15, Montano throws back across his body and well read by the Garces Rams, doesn't work. And Max Colbertson, Max Colbertson reading the play perfect. Great play, great play by Colbertson. Titan Tom says Carvajal, I say Max Colbertson with the big hit. You know, Coach Gass give, has some confidence in Absolutely. these corners because they're giving J.J. Flores man-to-man -man coverage with no safety help on top. So those guys are out there on an island. Third and 22 here for the Titans. The ball was on the 30 now all of a sudden, and we've got movement there, and that's going to be on the tight end for the Titans, and that is Caden Shelton. So we haven't called his name yet tonight until now, and he was off sides. And the ball just keeps coming backwards. So the Titans with a big first down, put him at the 30, have not been able to capitalize. Matter of fact, they're going backwards now. Montano, the quarterback, jogs in from the sidelines. 7.53 left here in the first half. Third, and they say 26. What's the number, though? <laughs> Ernest Jackson in the slot, two other receivers further out than him on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Montano, four-man rush, draw play, handed off to about the 42-yard line he gets, and another hit by Ben Watts. Sorry, that was, uh, that was Brian Pantoja makes the hit. Nice play by Pantoja. So Daniel Tobias will go back to receive this punt at the 10-yard line. Garces, another hold, another stop by the Rams. If Garces can eliminate the big plays from J.J. Flores and just concentrate on trying to stop Tay Johnson, Ty Johnson, uh, they're going to be in this game. High punt, and it goes out of bounds, maybe at the 20, the 19, right around there. That's where they call it. So, oh, he's going to mark it up even more. He's going to walk it up to the 25. So it'll be Garces' ball, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. So the Garces faithful still kind of trickling in to the visiting stands. And for those that are just getting here, they're looking up saying, hey, nice, we're up 10 nothing with 6.53 to go here in this first half. You're enjoying all of this on KernHineNetwork.com. You can tweet at us, KHSD Athletics. You can get us on Facebook. Be a part of this burgeoning, growing network that we have put in play here. Right here, it was on this football field last August of 2016. Myself, Kevin Willie, and Sun Green were up here in 119 degree weather getting our first game going. And ever since then, it has been an absolute rush of excitement for all the things that we put on KernHighNetwork.com. Here we go, Rams, ball on the 25-yard line, first and 10, 6.53 to go in this first half. Campbell stands at the 20, hands the ball off to Isaiah Martin, makes one good move, two good moves. Oh, wow. Broke some ankles, <laughs> then he ran over a couple dudes, finally brought down out there by Clayton Kyle, big hit, but Kyle had to bring him down after the first down. Boy, he's a great, great running back. I tell you what, you give him a little space, and he's he's tough to bring down. Campbell has three receivers way out to the left side. They rush him, but he fires, gets Austin. Austin makes the catch and then cuts back. He's at the 30. Austin to the 20, and they run him out. At about the 20-yard line, 19-yard line, a great catch. He stopped on a dime after the catch and took off for the sidelines. Nice play. I was just going to say, I like the matchup between Austin down here against Jacob Gomez, number two for Frontier. 24 yards on the pass play. Rams have the ball at the 18-yard line, first down and 10 to go. I tell you what, the you know the stars might align for these Garces Rams this year because they've got Stockdale next next week in Game Ten. Bakersfield High goes to travels to Liberty. Whew. Three receivers to the far left. Martin takes the handoff, hit early, 
in the backfield by Carson Woodelm. But he's able to still pick up one or two more yards. And that nice offensive line for the Garces Rams, Joshua Barnes in there, number 72. We've already talked about Adam Robles. Julian Hernandez. And here's a second and eight. Campbell decides to keep it on a run to the left. He cuts back up. Joseph Campbell gets to about the nine-yard line. Looks like they may move the chains, or do they? No, they're going to say third and inches. Ooh. Nice play, though. You know, Joseph's not going to... He's not going to run past a lot of guys. He's not going to no, burn he, the grass with some speed, but he's big and he's strong. And he's making the right decision. Exactly, exactly. Rub my mind, Rick. I think they're going to measure this. Huh? Yeah, i tell you what. He went down. Well, I believe to be was a first down, but I'm not r right on the line. I'm about 30 yards behind it. Nope, no measurement at all. They're going to say third down. So third and inches here, 525 to go in the half. Garst is up 10 to nothing right now on the road at Frontier. Austin and Bell, the two receivers on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Campbell has two backs back there with him. They use Martin to get the first down and a big, strong run, and they get it. Isaiah Martin on the carry. <laughs> Garst is knocking on the door again. That lead blocker really, you know, you got a guy like Martin, then you have yeah. a lead blocker. You've got one of the three Tobiases leading the way there, and that was, there was no doubt about it. You know, we saw that earlier. They brought Tobias in, led the way for Martin, and again, they did it there for the first down. And now they, on a first and goal from the seven, Nick Tobias and Isaiah Martin, the two backs next to Campbell. They give it to Tobias this time. They're going to let him try to sniff that end zone. He gets close. Flag on the play, though. Right in the middle of the scrum is where the flag was tossed, so one tends to believe that it's a hold, but you never know. And the white hat looks over to tell Coach Gass who it was. It's a hold on Garces. The ball will go back a little bit. 435 remains here in this first half. The aforementioned Stan Green down there talking to Prime Minister Amistoy at the 10-yard line. I told you, it's tonight's a who's who. Campbell sends Martin out to the flats. Doesn't look at him really to throw. Look at this. Wow. Touchdown to Austin. Zings a TD wow. right on the money. Touchdown, Garces. A real no-nonsense route. But, boy, Campbell, the minute Austin turned around, boom, the ball that was in ball his hand. was there. That was a great job by Campbell that time. I told you, he didn't look like a sophomore. Slung it quickly. He kind of threw that off his back foot, too. And all of a sudden, it's 16-0. Garces, so when that crowd over at Liberty hears that score read off, you're going to get some oohs and some ahs. Here's the PAT by Dallas. High snap again. But the ball is up, and it is through. No flags. We will take a break. It is 17-0 right now. Garces up on Frontier. Back in a moment on CurrentEyeNetwork.com. I was shearing my lamb for fair. I have two lambs. <laughs> Taking care of animals is you feed them twice a day, make sure they have water, walk them, make sure they're ready for fair. Vet science is the first year before you can actually go into animal science and it's a lot of like hands-on with the different animals and you get to learn different things such as giving shots, castrating, all that fun stuff. For me, wanting to be a vet when I'm older, it helped prepares me all the stuff that I'm learning, and ag is definitely gonna help me. I'm in ag communications. Anything that you see on the Facebook page is what we do, and pictures, and we do all the posters that are around campus, anything that just promotes ag. Our students are all part of the FFA organization. 
17 to nothing with 4.17 to go in this first half. Garces up on the road at Frontier. Dallas's kick. They go ahead and just kick it to J.J. again. They corner him over here on this side. J.J. looking to get to the far side. Big contact, big blocks. J.J. cuts back up against the grain and gets to the 30-yard line again. So Garces, they're intentionally kicking it over to him, trying to push him up against the sidelines, seal the edge, and say, all right, we think we can get you. And they do again. But it's early. Yeah, it is. So. Well, Rick, if you're Coach Bandy, and his quarterback, Dusty Montano, you need to get something going here with 4-10 left in the first half. You want to get a score before this half. Right. Four half, you want to go in 17-0 now. If you go in 17-7, that's going to be a moral victory. Handoff right up the middle. They put the ball in Ty Johnson's hands. On the stop, number nine, Isaac Jimenez. Gain of... Maybe a yard, under four to go here in this first half. They really haven't got Ty Johnson on track yet. We, you know, he's, he's had a couple couple runs, but uh, he doesn't look like he's in his groove yet. Montagna on the short shot, got it at the 30, drops straight back. Fires, has a man, and it's oh. over. Oh, it's through the hands, and it was there. Boy, he put it on the money. And it was Gabriel Salazar, the outreached fingertips of Salazar. Nice pass. It was. Oh, they're going to say that was Getman out there. Getman that was intended for. And that's going to bring up third and seven. That's one of those as a coach. You probably want a receiver in that spot, that number two spot there, not a, not a fullback. Garces looks like they're bringing everybody and their flags just a little too eager to get in there. And boy, is that going to help Frontier. Garces was bringing the kitchen sink at him and it looks as though it might have been uh, Isaac Jimenez. Pretty excited, wanted to get in there. And now Isaac's got to take that long jog off the field over there. <laughs> Talk to the coaching staff. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do they have 11 out there? They do. Okay, now all of a sudden, manageable third and two after the encroachment. And Montagna rolls in here. Maybe another one. Maybe another hard count. Why not? Rick, if you've got to do it, you've got to do it. That's right. Third and two, much more manageable. But what if your guys jump? Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. All right. Flores. And Baker out to the far side, but not at this moment. They're going to call a timeout. Coach Banyan wants to talk it over. Three and a half to go here in this first half. 17-0. Garces with a lead over the homeschool Titans. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm going to ask the question, but I don't want it to infer anything disrespectful about either school. But are you surprised at the score here at 17-0? I and am. why? I actually am. I thought it would be a little closer right now. You know, it could be 21 nothing because Garces was inside the inside the five the first series and ended up getting a field goal. But uh, we just haven't seen uh, – Frontier looks a little out of, out of rhythm right now. But uh, they've got another half. And they usually do a pretty good job making adjustments for the second half. So I think you're going to see um, – Hopefully a different Frontier team come out in that second half. Tonight our director, producer, Antonio, to Rick's immediate right. The Bentley riding shotgun, making sure we are dialed into the world and the world's dialed into us. Julian handling our cameras tonight as always. Here we go. Big third and two here for the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> Ty Johnson tried to get him to jump from the backfield. Will he get the first down? I don't think oh, he I don't did. think so. And Ty Johnson, slick little move before the snap to try to get Garces to jump. They did not. All they did was jump all over him when he had the football, and they stopped him. They lost a yard, and now it's going to be fourth and four. And Coach Bandy's going to send on the punt team here, 3-12 and counting here in the first half, and they're trailing 17-0. Garces 
feeling good about things right now. They're going to get the football back with about two and a half minutes left in this first half with a 17-0 lead. Big stop by Garces. Woo. Big, big stop. That was a play Frontier had to have. You're right, Rick. Tobias stands at his 30. Wind starting to pick up a little bit. Starting to see a little bit of movement on the ribbons. They fake the punt. They go for the first down, and they get it. Oh, big play. Nice play. Wow. And they pick up the first down. And I think that was Carson Woodhelm. The sure-handed, sure-handed Carson Woodhelm. Talk about bloodline football, great athletes. Father's a great athlete. Dad used to strike me out when we were playing baseball at Bakersfield College. <laughs> He'd stare me down. He'd back me off the plate. I'd say, Woody, what are you doing, man? This is We're on the same team. Vance, you cover the plate. I'm going to go at you. And that's his son right there. First down, much needed. But, but Rick, but. A lot of real estate left here with two minutes and 13 seconds. Everybody packed in tight. And now, oh, they ran out of time. Are you kidding me? Pick up the, they pick up the four yards on the fake punt. And all that time rattles off the clock. And they give back five yards. But lost a lot of seconds, Rick. They sure did. So now 2.08 to go here in this first half, and they have 60 yards to get a touchdown and about 40 yards to get a field goal attempt. They come at him. They go long. They toss it up, and it is, oh, dropped. And that ball was a beauty, and the speedy, speedy Ty Johnson got under it, and it trickled off his fingertips, and frankly, probably should have been caught. Even he knows it, and that would have been a big first down. Wow. He had about two steps on that DB. Yeah, I say first down. Probably would have been six. Oh, yeah. Well. Well thrown ball by Sure Montario. was. Sure was. Nice, nice. That he can spin that. He can spin it. But back to the reality of the situation with 2.02 to go. Second and 15 from the 41-yard line. Montano drops straight back again. Nice coverage for a second. Roland gets hit. Flag on the play. And they're going to say that Stephen Roland was held. And I'll go ahead and tell you about Stephen Roland. He's a junior, 6'4", 205. Two weeks ago, we had the Centennial Garces game. And he was going to get our... He was going to get my Tony's Pizza player of the game. Kevin Willie had chose someone else. We went with Rich Cornford and his 1% that he had. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Stephen Rowland absolutely cost Centennial fits. He's 6'4", 205. But he is, his vision, his balance, he can almost guess where the running back's going to go. And he's played a huge role in this Garces defense success. And right now he caused... A hold against Frontier, and look at this football go backwards and backwards and backwards, and that's been the tail of the Titans this first half. Yes, it has. You know, I thought Frontier would do a better job protecting Montano, and Montano has been on the run all night. Well, now Garces looks like they're going to bring three at least, at least three on a third and forever. They bring four again. Montano steps up into the pocket. Look out. They get him from behind. Ball's on the ground. It's loose. I think Garces is going to. And. It looks nope. like the Titans picked it up, but it's going to be third and a long, long ways from about the 21-yard line. And Garces, Coach Gass calls a timeout with 133. They have a chance to get the football back in decent field position, believe it or not. After all these penalties, it was first and 10 from the 41. Now it's third and 37 from the 20. So the Titans having a hard time continuing to go forward on their drives. Garces missed a big opportunity. That ball was on the ground, and they had three guys around it and one Frontier guy, and I think he came up, and Frontier came up with it. And had that been recovered by the Rams at the 20 with a buck 33 to go, you can start to write your own script here. Coach Bandy's got some work to do at halftime, get together with his coaches, and Coach Gass is going to get together with his coaches and say, all right, we need to protect the lead, but also keep the pressure on. Yeah. No announcements yet for next week with regards to games. 
Kyle Wiley will start to put stuff out tomorrow morning at the latest, maybe even tonight. He may start to let people know where we're going to be and what we're going to do. Um, he may not get back till tomorrow from Kern Valley up there. Man, I told him, I said, you bring your fishing pole? Yeah. Hey, funny you should say that because Cornford and his brother said to bring our poles. And I said, all right, well, you have your license? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I said, all right, just stop. Third and 36. Buck 33 to go here in this first half. Garces to draw play, so they just kind of back it up and say, okay. And a nice effort, but he goes out of bounds Ooh. and actually gives Garces some time to com compose themselves here. And Coach Bandy, you can see him kind of just chagrined. He kind of just shook his shoulders and said, doggone it, we stopped the clock. So it was a draw play out to the far side. And not a bad run, but they had so far to go that the one asset could have been to keep that clock going. And I think Coach Bandy's going to have just a quick educational moment with his talented running back, Ty Johnson. <laughs> That's exactly what he's doing. Garces may want to go after this, see if they can block it. They get a good shot at it. Not a bad punt. Going to be fair. Caught at the fumble. 45-yard line. Ooh, a collective ooh by this Titan crowd. Almost picked up, but Garces falls on it. It'll be first and 10, a buck 19. Okay, you have a uh, buck 19, two timeouts left. Ball's on the 45-yard line. What are you doing, Coach? You've got plenty of time. Got what, plenty of time. What's on your mind? A couple outs. Get, couple attack the outside. Get out of bounds. You're going to have one one shot for a chunk play down the middle. At least get yourself in field goal range. Campbell stands at the 40-yard line. They've got Austin sold up on the back on the far side. He rolls to his right, throws back across to his left, overthrows. Nobody can get it though. So he saw Austin. Just boy, what a strong arm Joseph has. Yeah. And he, not happy with himself, he walks over the sidelines, kind of hits himself on the helmet, says, come on, come on. I think they got ahead of themselves right there, going for the, going for the kill shot there. But uh, With a 17-point cushion, yeah. feeling pretty confident. And you've got time. Now, you, now you're second and 10. And your routes get a little deeper now. Austin down here below us, the wide side of the field, the right side of the line of scrimmage, little pitch right in front of us into Bell's hands. Bell goes down at the 49-yard line. So, oh, and here comes some flags. And the white hat throws it. So unsportsmanlike conduct's going out against somebody. The white hat threw it right into the scrum. Who's it going to be? Well, it looked like Jackson... Well, I guess they... Did they just pick it up? Yeah, I don't think okay. they Okay. Well, at first we saw the... Well, there was some pushing and some shoving, and the yellow yeah. flag went up, but then they picked it up real quick and said, hey, just boys being boys, let's keep playing. Third and four, 33 seconds to go here in the first half. Again, you've got Austin down here. In pre oh, one on one. Campbell sees Austin again, this time throws off his back foot and it's caught out there at the 30 yard line. So a strong, strong throw to you Bell off his, time out here. Yeah. off his back foot. A 33 yard dart falling backwards. Campbell connects and they take a timeout. It's gonna be first and 10 from the Frontier 31 yard line with 15 seconds to go. Well executed. He was looking here onto his right for Austin. Had him, actually. Uh, a, yeah, skinny post, and then came off Austin and went back to his left and still got it off to Isaiah Bell. Well, <clears throat> 15 seconds, Coach. First and 10. You have one more timeout. I think they need their... Just a little out of his range, I think. Uh, uh, I think Dallas. so, too. I think, you know... Quick hitch, seven, seven, eight yard hitch on the sideline. Get out of bounds. At least you're gonna, that's gonna give you maybe a shot because you've got one timeout left. A shot for the end zone, still have time. You get a quick timeout, still have time for a field goal. 
if they're able to position themselves for a field goal, just saying, and it was to go through, nothing wrong with a 20 nothing lead. But they got to catch and get out of bounds if they don't score here. 15 seconds remains in this first half. Garces is up 17 nothing. Campbell stands at the 34 yard, 36 yard line. He looks right. Wants to get rid of it and does. Had Isaiah Martin in the area, but he threw mm -hmm. it to his back ankle. Incomplete. He was under major duress by Ernest Jackson. Jackson all over him. So he wisely gets rid of it. Actually, pretty good job there by Campbell getting rid of it early. Instead of continuing that play out, that would have burned another four or five seconds off of Absolutely it. Absolutely right, Rick. So Frontier right now on their heels really needing to have a stop here and keep it where it's at, which is trailing 0-17. to 17. Campbell now has three, three receivers down here to the bottom of the field below us. The wide side of the field on a second and 10 with 10 seconds. Martin to block. Campbell gets rid of it again. Scooped. Hits the ground. So both Martin and Campbell get hit. Incomplete, and that brings up third and ten. So now with five seconds left, Rick, maybe it's time to toss it in the end zone. Well, they must be out of the range of Dallas, the field goal kicker. He actually had Austin on the on an out. It was open about ten yards down the field. Uh, right on the sideline, could have got out of bounds. It got the ball into at least field goal range. It would be a 45-yard attempt, and... They're taking a long time to get this play in, so I'm assuming Coach Gass is going to call a timeout, and he does. So with five seconds to go, final timeout used by the Rams. They're up 17-0. Five seconds remains here in this first half. Hope you're enjoying this game. It's a nice one. It's an important one. And uh, as Rick mentioned in the pregame, if Garces is able to pull this one out, and let's say that it sets up tomorrow, uh, next Friday night for a BHS Liberty Showdown where, depending on how that goes, you'll have a one-loss BHS team. If they beat Liberty, that gives Liberty a one-loss. Garces beat Stockdale next week. They have one loss, so you're going to have a three-way tie, and everybody had beaten everybody. Garces has beat BHS. BHS has beaten Liberty. Liberty has beaten Garces. So... The good thing about that is Garces is in Division Two, Bakersfield High, and Liberty will go on to Division One. With that tough preseason schedule, they were 0 and 5, and Coach Gas had those guys dig deep for that BHS win, and it's been a different season ever since. Here we go. <clears throat> Five seconds remain in the first half. Campbell drops back, throws one up, flings it up, and it is. Is it caught? Is it caught? No, they say he's out of bounds. They say he was out of bounds. What a great, so it's caught. It's a great catch, but they're going to say he was just out of bounds. Ooh, 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 ooh. The Titans escape one there. That was really, really close to being a touchdown. And your thoughts on the final play there well, of the first half. Well, I might half. question Frontier was playing that. They've, you know, they had to take a shot at the end zone, and they were still uh, not quite deep enough. You know, they know they're going to got to throw the ball. And they got to throw it in the end zone to score. So I would have backed off a little bit more. Uh, Ooh, that ball was caught. Yeah, you but can't. Last play of the game on those things, you can't get to let the receiver get behind you like he did. Well, out of bounds, so no score. It officially 17 to 0 right now. We're at the half. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have that voice that you've been hearing all night. Tom Myers, the voice of Titan Sports, celebrating 10 years coming up, and he's also one of our colleagues that calls games with us. So we'll go over that. Rick and I'll have some thoughts as we get into the third quarter. Sure hope you're enjoying this here on Kern High Network. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Yeah! 
Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shatter. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot, I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had a chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. In animal care, the students learn a variety of things, whether it's tools or terms in the veterinary field. They learn about the skeletal systems, the animal nutrition, the housing, how to properly care for them. They also have the opportunity in the spring to actually go work at a veterinary hospital or at an animal shelter or a grooming and salon. Animal restraint, weight and temperature, pulse, respiration, all of that I learned here. They take a state certified test, and if they pass, they become a certified vet assistant right out of high school. It's always hands-on, and so I think that's what really helps us is that we're not just getting it from a textbook, we're actually doing these things, and we're actually practicing these things that we'll be doing in our future careers. Well, we're learning a lot, and especially with just the basic knowledge of what you would need for an entry-level job. All the basic skills to be a medical assistant in a doctor's office or a clinic. You're leaning on it, and that'll make a difference. And then they also do on-the-job training, and they work in doctor's offices or clinics throughout Kern County. The kids are job ready, and many of them are employed before the end of the school year. They're promised a job, as well as they continue their education. We have many registered nurses out there and even physicians. I'm thinking I want to be an anesthesiologist. So a lot of school, but it'll be worth it in the end. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile. And I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile. And I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Yeah! Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shafter. It's 
It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. Good, and you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two-year program, they're gonna be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot, I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years, I worked as an instructor for 6 years and then became a corporate pilot and I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had the chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. In animal care, the students learn a variety of things, whether it's tools or terms in the veterinary field. They learn about the skeletal systems, the animal nutrition, the housing, how to properly care for them. They also have the opportunity in the spring to actually go work at a veterinary hospital or at an animal shelter or a grooming and salon. Animal restraint, weight and temperature, pulse, respiration, all of that I learned here. They take a state certified test, and if they pass, they become a certified vet assistant right out of high school. It's always hands-on, and so I think that's what really helps us is that we're not just getting it from a textbook, we're actually doing these things, and we're actually practicing these things that we'll be doing in our future careers. Well, we're learning a lot, and especially with just the basic knowledge of what you would need for an entry-level job. All the basic skills to be a medical assistant in a doctor's office or a clinic. You're leaning on it, and that'll make a difference. And then they also do on-the-job training, and they work in doctor's offices or clinics throughout Kern County. The kids are job ready, and many of them are employed before the end of the school year. They're promised a job, as well as they continue their education. We have many registered nurses out there and even physicians. I'm thinking I want to be an anesthesiologist. So a lot of school, but it'll be worth it in the end. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile. And I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile. And I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shafter. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. 
There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. Good, and you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two year program, they're gonna be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot, I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years, I worked as an instructor for 6 years and then became a corporate pilot and I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to see because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had a chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. Welcome back, everybody. We're at halftime, and below us, the marching Titan band below us just providing some great ambiance. It's 17 to nothing right now, though. Garces up over the homeschool Frontier Titans. Antonio, Todd, Rick, Julian all here. And we bring up, through the hatch, the voice of Titan Sports, Tom Myers. And this season became one of our colleagues and started to call a bunch of football games for us. Did a ton of volleyball for us this season. Uh, Tom, great to have you here for a few minutes. Your thought on the first half. Well, you know, Isaiah Martin is kind of uh, bending the team to his will. Didn't have much of a showing in the first uh, set of downs, but then started running downhill, and boy, the Titans defense is really having a tough time handling him. He's really going to probably take over, I think, here in the second half. We're going to see a lot more of him. Rick was talking about how the, the Titans, they get some, some good stuff going, some good mojo, and then it's backwards, backwards, backwards with penalties and some big sacks. Uh, give us kind of a, you know, your, um, your, your prognosis right now on Titan football. Well, the inside of it right now is right now kind of a, a one-dimensional team. You know, we've got a good running game. Uh, Ty Johnson, a heck of a running back. Um, J.J. Flores, great coming out of the slot there. But the passing game just isn't there. And right now, Dusty Montano, good quarterback. Uh, he's a junior this year, having a little bit of trouble making the connection. He had a couple of guys long and threw it over just a little bit. Um, I, I see better things out of Dusty in the coming year. Um, we're, we may just be one year behind right now. Uh, you're the voice of Titan Sports. I heard an announcement uh, from you a little bit earlier on, something about a decade of sports. Yeah, they're uh, putting together a program right now. We're going to have a, a, a banquet at the end of this year, 10 years of Frontier Titan Sports. Unbelievable. And, and there's a video coming out, and they asked me to do the uh, the voiceover for it, kind of uh, kind of like a 30 for 30, and I'm really looking forward to doing that. Um, really spoiled with a lot of the stuff that I get to do. Of course, I get to hang out with you guys. What a great crew of guys we have here. Rick and I called Frontier Liberty a couple weeks ago and had a great time doing that. And boy, um, and the Kern High Network, what a great tool uh, for our, our students and our fans to get a watch and keep up on uh, some of their favorite players and really get to celebrate high school athletes. For 2017 football season so far, whether it's been down below uh, at your home games or in some of the other games that you called around the season, any indelible moments stand out to you so far, Tom Myers? Well, I think probably the, the one of the indelible moments that I could basically talk about, which I thought was a great moment, the Liberty game was a fantastic game that Rick and I called, and we really got to see Liberty, what he said at the time was what he thought was the team to beat in our, in our town, and I think he's right, and they were really just starting to get things kind of going, and boy, do they really have some talent over there at Liberty High School. Inside the gymnasiums, you've been calling some great, great volleyball games. You and I had some fun calling them together when we split up, and I just couldn't do it because of my nerves and my daughter. You've been daughters, you've been covering all the other games. Uh, some thoughts on volleyball this season. Well, and the funny thing is, you know, I get to call a lot of the SWYL championship games in, in town here, and a lot of those, those uh, types of events. I don't spread out very often to some of the other schools so the great thing about what we've been doing is we've been covering other 
uh, SW or SYL games and a yep. few other games and games you normally don't get to see and some talent you don't normally know that's out there. And boy, what a joy that is. And plus, you know, I've really fallen in love with his two daughters. The, the <laughs> those girls are fantastic. I love watching them play. Thanks. I really am excited for next year. And in fact, last night I sat at home on my sofa with my tablet and watched the game that you and, and Kyle Wiley were calling. And boy. Um, what a fantastic game, and what a great opportunity to get to showcase student-athletes. As we go into the winter, we have some really nice basketball slated, um, some wrestling, both boys and girls, and then we get into the spring. Am I going to be able to snag you for some more stuff? Oh, I'm definitely on on the roster for that. I can't wait to do it. My son actually is a wrestler here at Frontier High School. Oh, nice. And I'm um, looking forward to watching him wrestle this year. What but, weight? Uh, I don't know what his weight is because he hasn't got his final weigh-in right now. Right now he's around 210. <laughs> Oh, my so, gosh. So, oh. Yeah. so we're going to have to wait and see where he falls on that thing. Um, but he's working hard. But wrestling's going to be fun to do. Basketball is going to be a blast. I know that we've got a couple things coming up. The Big North High uh, yep. opening night. Yep. And um, I'm kind of excited. I, I don't know if I'll get to be a part of that. Uh, hopefully they put me on the schedule. I don't know what I have here. But, boy, I'll tell you what, fans keep an eye out on what's coming up on the network. And we're really looking forward to it. Plus, what rarely do I ever have to tell my guests to get out of here. But you got to go, my man. I got a minute. I got to start a football game. So, hey, buddy. Uh, thanks, man. Appreciate thanks a lot. It. That golden voice you hear below us is one of our colleagues from the KernHighNetwork.com. Tom, and uh, get out of here, buddy. Everybody enjoy the second half. <laughs> See you, my man. Thank you. <laughs> That's a rarity. Hey, you got to go and announce the game. See ya. 17-0 to score. And hope you enjoyed the half. And then Tom Myers rolls in and gives us some stuff. Let's ride the Bentley for a minute here. Games around Kern County. Independence leads east 21-13. Coach Fanuki hanging in there, only trailing by eight. South ahead of Foothill, 35-7. Highland looks like they're going to go undefeated, 29-7 over Miramonte. Golden Valley over West, 25-20. McFarland over North, 14-7. And BHS leads Stockdale by a scant eight points, 14-6. Tehachapi leads Ridgeview, 14-7. Liberty leads Centennial, 10-0. So... No blowout games over there with uh, Liberty and Centennial and BHS and Stockdale. Uh, our other game tonight on the Kern High Network, Rosamond is leading Kern Valley 36-15, to 15, so a 19-point lead for Rosamond. Let's bring in uh, Rick Van Horn, my partner. Rick was able to eat, I don't know, seven, eight pieces of pizza in halftime, and now he's back <laughs> with us. Hey, Rick, um, y y your thoughts on uh, as we go into this third quarter? Well, you know, Garces, you've got to give the credit to Garces. They played a <coughs> very good half. Frontier didn't didn't get things worked out. They couldn't find their rhythm, um, couldn't get Ty Johnson untracked in that first half. And he's the, like I said, he's the bread and butter of this team, and he's the stir that makes this drink. Well, tastes good. You know that, you know, here from Tom Myers, I get from the horse's mouth, who has watched all their games all season long, and he says at this time we're one dimensional and we're we're a Better team possibly than what you're seeing at this exact moment, but here we go. We go into the third quarter. They will get the football, and Dallas now spreads it over, taking it to the 14-yard line. And uh, look at this. Maybe some space over here. Garces does a good job of recovering over there. Good tackle by Isaac Bowers. And so not bad field position at all. Let's see if Coach Bandy's halftime adjustments and some communicating with his team has raised the bar a little bit here, and I'm going to put this ball in the end zone. Garces did a good job that first half, putting pressure on Montano. You know, we always talk about keeping that quarterback clean, and and uh, front, that was something the Frontier couldn't do that first half. First and ten. They fake the end around, and it's pretty much a wildcat yeah, start. Yeah. And Ty Johnson gets nothing. He faked it to J.J. Flores, so Coach Bandy comes out with an entirely different look. Well, this is a this is a look that they've used the whole season, kind of adjustment. They'll take Montano out, put Ty, Ty Johnson back there, and now they'll play games with Johnson and Flores on the fly sweep, and Johnson just uh, taking it up the middle. Lost a yard officially. Second and 11, ball's at the 24, by the way. This time, again, they try it again, but Garces there just to gobble it up. 
And another big hit out there by Isaac Jimenez was one of them, and then Steven Rowland. And Steven Rowland talked about him a couple times, and that's the 6'4", 210-pound junior. Wears number seven, left defensive end. And on the right side is Isaac Jimenez, a six-footer. a six footer. So some tall defensive ends for the Rams. And a tall order here for the Titans. Third and 11, three receivers break out to the far side. It's Flores, Armstrong, Baker, Montano in the shotgun. Hard count, nobody jumps, drops straight back. He can spin it, but he's in trouble. He gets out of trouble, rolls, takes a look at it, wants to throw, decides to keep it in, takes a big hit, goes out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. So nice job by the Garces Rams defense to maintain that speedy quarterback in Montano. Going to bring up about a fourth and eight. And the tackle made by Max Colbertson. He plays right cornerback right below us. He tracked down. Montano all the way across the football field to make the hit. So the speed of the junior, he's listed as a wide receiver and a quarterback, Max Colbertson, doing it all for the Garces Rams. Fourth and eight, Titans going to have to punt. A wobbler, fair caught at the 40-yard line by Tobias. So now Garces will come back on. Defense does their job again. They do. I don't know if we can give a Tony's Pizza award to the entire defense of Garces. One of their defensive players got it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when we covered the Centennial Garces game. So the defense, you know, for, an, for a team that's known for Martin, Campbell, Bell, Austin, it's their, de Austin yeah. their defense continues to step up. It's those front four guys that have been doing a great job. Sounds like our renegades, doesn't it? With all the offensive powers the Bakersfield College guys have, that defense is no joke. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Here's a first and 10. Campbell quickly out to Austin on the far side. He'll pick up two or three yards. And why don't I take that segue for a minute? The Renegades six and one now. Tomorrow they'll host Santa Monica. Uh, if you were to go on paper, all intents and purposes, you're thinking that the Renegades are going to take care of business there. Let's just say they do and possibly be seven and one tomorrow night, Rick, heading into Ventura and then Canyons. Whew, Renegades. Your Renegades, my Renegades, our Renegades. Second and seven. Campbell takes the snap, bobbles it. Oh, barely gets it handed off to Martin. It's a broken play, and now Isaiah Martin gets it to the 40-yard line. Wow, an 18-yard gain on a bobbled handoff that Campbell barely got in the hands barely of Martin. Barely got there. Martin wasn't stopping. He wasn't slowing down. He's like, hey, <laughs> you put the bread in the, in the yeah. basket or not, I'm going. Yeah, train is leaving. <laughs> and you're right. So first and 10 from the Titan 40-yard line, and this Titan defense right now is going to have to absolutely dig in, tighten up the shoelaces, and do something serious here with a 17 to nothing deficit to these Garces Rams here. Campbell stands at the 45-yard line. In motion, right in front of him is Isaiah Bell. Campbell on the keeper himself. Campbell wants to run it. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. Joseph Campbell to the 10. Will he get down in there? He does not. Gets to the four-yard line. So Joseph Campbell on a keeper just turns it upfield and says, I got it. Wow. Great job by Campbell. That was the one time he should have pitched to Martin because all night long, Frontier's been taking away Martin. <laughs> he kept it and got his biggest gain of the uh, night. Huge run for Joseph Campbell. And now this Titan defense on their heels and again inside the five yard line. First and goal exactly from the five. Two backs again. Tobias Martin back there with Campbell. Campbell takes the snap. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, a lot of guys in the kitchen there. They ran into each other. A little bit of a tricky play there because of the timing of two guys crossing right in front of Campbell and Tobias thrown for a loss. What tight space in there for all those fakes. Loss of maybe a yard, maybe. Can't make Coach Gass very happy because they've been down here before. In fact, all night long, and they haven't executed very good. Second and goal. They lost two, actually, to the seven-yard line. The ball's on the seven, so now they change up the formation. 
Bell right in front. They pitch it to him. Can Bell get where he needs to be? Cuts back up, and he's still on his feet, but every time he takes a step, he gets hit even harder and even harder. Another loss. So to your point, Coach Gass thinking, come on, guys. First and goal from the four. Yeah. Now all of a sudden it's third and goal from the nine or ten. You know, they keep running the fly sweep there to, with Bell, and it, it doesn't seem like Bell has got the, the great speed to get that corner. You know, you got a kid like Austin who might – who looks like he's faster than Bill. I might try a fly sweep with Austin. Well, they gave him forward progress to the eight yard line. So third and goal from the, well, come on, come on. let's say seven and a half, if you will. Tobias back there. And now an offset eye. Campbell sees Martin, wants to go to Martin, stops, fires, and incomplete across his body. And it was Bell again. So Campbell was trying to sell everybody on the fact that he was going to go to pitch a little kick out over here to Martin. But the whole time he was going to Bell across the middle, did not complete it. And we'll see Dallas come on to hopefully make it a 20 nothing ball game. But if you're in this position, Coach Gass might do something fun here too. Yeah, because he can't be happy with that series. When you're on the five yard line, first down, first and goal on the five, you don't, you don't get seven out of it. Dallas now. For a 24 yarder. The snap is perfect. It's up and did it go? It did not. No. It was wide right. Wide right. So the Titan crowd looking for something to kind of sink their teeth into with some optimism. And that was one of them. Frontier dodged the bullet there. So Frontier will come out, take over on the 20-yard line. And to give this Garces defense, defense chance another opportunity to inflict some more pain on this uh, Frontier offense that has not been able to get things rolling tonight. First and 10, 20-yard line. Let's see what happens here. Montano looks over. Has Ty Johnson on his left hip. And they give it to him. Johnson looking for some room in there. And look at Steven Roller. There's your comes guy, from, Roland. Comes from the other side and wraps him up and throws him down. A gain of five, though, so a good start. Some nice sportsmanship there. Kind of like a little counter tray. They pulled the big tight end, Shelton, and, and Roland, who was lined up on top of Roland, or, or uh, Shelton just followed him to the play. Pentoja helping TJ with his pads. I got you, man. I'll tackle you in a minute, but I got you. Second and four. They gave him six. They're going to stay on the ground. Johnson has his legs cut out from underneath him by <laughs> Pantoja, the guy that fixed his pads for him. I told you. He said, hey, let me get that for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back in I'll one see second. You, see you soon. Right. Well, uh, no gain. Third and four. Seven minutes to go in this third quarter. And so far, it's all Garces. 17 nothing. But as Rick's pointed out a couple times, it could be a lot more. They could be in the 30s had they converted on all of their opportunities. It was first and goal from the four in the first quarter. Pass play. They throw it out there, and I believe Spencer Armstrong was looking for some type of help from the officials on that. Didn't get it. Incomplete pass, and the Titans' offense stalls again, and they will have to punt. And it's going to be excellent field position for the Garces Rams. Daniel Tobias again is back. Frontier likes to put those fullbacks. Those kind of a, you know, that was Ernest Jackson there. Probably not the fastest kid on the field uh, in the slot there running a the seven route. And Here we go. Probably not going to beat a lot of guys one on one. Here's the punt. Oh, it's nice a boomer. Punt. It's a big one. Nice Tobias punt. sent back. He's got it at the 28-yard line. He tries to cut back up. He's got some room, and he'll get brought down about the 42-yard line. A nice job and a good tackle down there by Carson Woodhelm. So with 6.23 to go in the third quarter, Joseph Campbell will come back out with his Garces Rams. That is such an underrated play that T Tobias made right there. Catches the ball. Great punt. Big one. Catches the ball, doesn't let it bounce, and now gets a good return off that. That's my partner, Rick Van Horn. 
Played for the Drillers, played for the Renegades, played for the Running Rebels. Head coach at every possible level here, except for the Gades, maybe one day. That'd be nice, huh? Oh, offensive movement there by the Renegades, and might have been the big fella himself, Emmanuel Castro. And when you're 6'2", 280, as good of a job as you're doing knocking guys over out there, it's hard to hide when you're a big old dude. <laughs> you know, but, this is the first time I've seen Garces play this year live, and, and uh, I'm taking back, their guys up front are a lot bigger than I thought they were. First and 15, they'll start this drive over again. Now the ball's at the 37-yard line. Campbell hands the ball off to Martin. Martin makes one good, quick move. Now he's just stalling. <laughs> now he's just waiting for some space. And he gets up to the 35-yard line. He's just cruising behind yeah. Austin, looking for some space. Boy, that was a confident, strong run by Isaiah Martin. Looks like he was just gliding there, actually almost looking like for contact. He was wanting to hit somebody. He looked like... He, you know, it looked like Walter Payton. He was yeah, kind of out yeah, there doing was. that little shift, saying, all right, who, yeah. who wants it? Who's going to take it? Well, well, it's a first down, and now Campbell has three receivers out to the left side, the wide side of the football field. His heels are at the 39-yard line of the Titans. They hand it off to Martin. This time he's keyed on, and they throw him down for a loss even of about one yard, and he's going to get helped up by one of his linemen. John Paul Lefebvre says, I got gotcha. you. And by the way, John Paul Lefebvre, 6'2", 231, sophomore, big offensive lineman, wears number 55 for the Rams. Boy, Coach Gass has to love a sophomore up there. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seniors. Seven seniors on this Garces team. Second and 11. Martin's only back there with Campbell. Campbell looks left, pump fakes, goes back over to Martin. Martin drops the football. So Campbell brought everybody to the left side of the field just to turn around and drop it off to Martin, but he bobbled it and dropped it incomplete. And with 5.19 to go in the third, it's going to be third and 11 for the Rams. Starting to have a beautiful breeze come in from the south. You can see that flag over there. If we ever show it to you, that flag is starting to roll. It is blowing hard D due south coming from SoCal. And the temperature's dropped. The wind is picked up. Campbell, third and 12. Fakes the handoff, fires across the middle. Not a good pass. Not a good pass as Austin Giggy. It was thrown behind him, and all the Rams can do is jog off the field. Another great opportunity yeah. stalled. Had Giggy open there for a minute and, and just missed it. I would have liked to see after that big run by Martin is Garces take a shot, a deep shot there. And the, oh, he almost reached for the flag and didn't do it. A high punt, and it's going to be downed at the 25-yard line. The white hat almost threw the flag on a roughing the punter on Dallas, but he took a good look at it. And nah, incidental contact, kept it in his pocket. And I think that's the right no call. I think so. So with 516, Rick, what does this Titan offense have to do to get off the snide here? Well, you know, they've, they've thrown their change up, their wildcat with, Ty Johnson and J.J. Flores. Um, you know, we haven't seen J.J. or Flores get on track yet. You know, usually by this time he's had a big yeah, player You're so too. right. You know, his big plays has come off a kickoff return. He's, you know, averaging about 30 yards every time he touches it, but uh, they haven't got him on track in the passing game. Bat snap picked up by Johnson. Has to just fall on it. So to start this drive, Coach Bandy's probably – Probably at a point now where his patience is wearing thin. Try to start off this new drive, and the ball bounces out of Johnson's hand on a Wildcat start. Wasn't a bad snap. And now we have Ethan Young in there. And he's going to be calling the plays now. Ethan is a 5'11", 150-pound junior quarterback, defensive back. Where's number 10? He's actually in the slot there. Now he's in the slot. Yeah. yeah, he went in the slot. The play was given to him. Goes in the slot. And here's a big run here at the 30. At the 40. To the 50. And he's brought down at the 40-yard line. So it's a great play out there. A nice run by Ty Johnson. And, boy, did this crowd need that jolt of excitement. <laughs> went down at the 41-yard line. You're a home crowd. This great yeah. marching band. 
Uh, last home game of the season, and you that's got a goose egg right now. Wildcat formation, that's their change up. That play actually killed Ridgeview in that first week. It might have been the third week, but uh, Johnson made a living off that play right there against Ridgeview. So now, first and 10 from the Garces 41. Titans, it's been a while since they've been in enemy territory. They break out of the huddle. Everybody's in tight, real compact set. Johnson just takes it from the Wildcat, gets it to about the 39-yard line, or the 40 proper. You're talking about uh, Roland being a big kid. You know, we haven't talked too much about number 99, Travion Bell for Garces, number 99, a 6'4", 275-pound junior. Another junior. Good looking kid. Tobias down here is going to go one on one with Baker, but everybody's packed in pretty tight here. Johnson from the Wildcat hands the ball off over there to JJ Flores. Flores gets loose. Flores at the 30 and gets to about the 27 yard line. So they're, hike, they're snapping the ball to Tanner Johnson, and then he's got JJ Flores back there with him. So now. The dreaded two-headed monster if you're the Garces yeah. defense. 340 yeah. to go in this third quarter, coach. Got Johnson untracked a little bit with that nice long run. Almost had Flores untracked there, but if they can go in and, and score here, 17-7, down by 10, they're still in this ball game. First and 10 from the 28-yard line of Garces. Another run play right down here to the near side. And the forward progress is going to be at about the 25-yard line. So Johnson, again, tackled by a host of Garces Rams. Things were started off by Max Culbertson and then ended up bringing Isaac Jimenez into the play. Boy, Max Culbertson's just, one of the, he's, every, every, he's everywhere. He's all around that football. 245 counting. And that's the bad thing when they do go to this change up here. It eats a lot of the clock up because it's all run, it's all Johnson, it's all Flores run game. Second and seven. Johnson again. Oh, makes a nice nifty move out there and gets the ball down to about. Oh, and a flag at the very end of the play. And I saw Garces Ram clapping. Isaac Jimenez clapping when he saw the flag, but now I think he's thinking, wait a second. So the ball. Discussion by the White Hat and his colleagues, and it is personal foul, helmet to helmet. Ooh, wow. Wow, so now the Titans are gonna have some positive movement towards the goal line. With 2.25 to go in this third quarter, they trail 17-0, but now all of a sudden they change up in the offensive look and design. And as you say, it chews up some clock, but it's also chewing up some yards, Rick. Yeah, it is. First and goal from the eight. It's J.J. Flores offset, standing next to Ty Johnson, who's been taking these snaps. 2.20 to go here in the third quarter. Johnson waits patiently, wants to get to the end zone, and he does. He put a beautiful move on Rafael Carvajal. He gets in, touchdown Titans. And hey, this crowd trying to get back in this thing, and that certainly helps. Touchdown Frontier. Frontier, still plenty of time. Two minutes left in this third quarter. Got a whole fourth quarter. You know, if Garces couldn't, didn't find a remedy to stop that Tay Johnson on that counter tray out the back side, uh, Frontier may come back. Tanner Neal for the PAT. The snap is perfect. The hold is down. This kick is up and it's through. We'll take a break. 2.13 left in this third quarter. Here comes Frontier, 17-7 here. KernHighNetwork.com.
This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation. Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, and you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people in my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Plourd since he's worked at so many companies. Being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. Welcome back. Frontier Titan Marching Band playing some Chicago, 25 or 6 to 4. What I can tell you, it's 17-7. Titans on the board, and they will kick off. And they haven't kicked off since the opening kickoff of the game. Ball taken at the 7-yard line by Tobias. Tobias cuts up against the grain. Hit driven down at about the 20-yard line. So these games just go back and forth with momentum, but this hasn't really been a game so far where the Titans have had a lot of momentum until this point. Well, Garst is gonna kick themselves if Frontier comes back, because they've been inside the five yard line four times and, and haven't came away with much. Missed field goal on the last drive. Inside the five on their first drive and only got three points out of it. First and 10, ball at their own 21. Garces leads by 10. Campbell pitches out to Martin on the far side. Martin cuts up immediately. Spent no time trying to get to the outside. Said, I'm gonna go right up here in the middle. But he's met by some Titans. Gains about three yards to the 25 yard line. And nice tackle out there by Nicholas Cisneros. Cisneros, 5'11", 205 pound junior. I would have to say Martin's over 20 carries already into the, and we're just into the end of the third quarter. Two receiver split. Bell comes in motion. Bad fumble. Another fumble. That's going to be picked up by the Titans. And the whistle blows, and Coach Bandy, they all want to know, the coaching staff up here, everybody wants to know why that's not a fumble. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. They're going to say it was an incomplete pass. And listen to the boo birds below us. And I don't take sides ever, Rick, but I may have to agree with the Titan crowd here. Well, it's tough to, from my angle, it was tough to tell whether it was forward or a, or a lateral, but I do, do know he threw it. Ooh. Well, the snap was bobbled by Campbell, and Campbell picked it up. Tossed it over here to Isaiah, Isaiah Bell, Bell and everybody on this side of the football field certainly thought it was a backwards pass, i.e. fumble. Now Campbell wants to strike quickly and it's an incomplete pass on a third and six. So the Ram offense is going to have to go off the field. And shall we say the Titans are starting to feel it. They are. They've got a little momentum going here now. Uh, still in the third quarter. So now J.J. Flores is going to go back to the 50-yard mm, line, maybe. All right, he'll, he'll go back into his territory, but only by about five yards. Here's the punt by Dallas. Flores just says, everybody, stay away, stay away, and it goes out of bounds at about the 47-yard line inside Frontier. Uh, side of the football field, so... Boy, this game is... This game is crazy game of football isn't it just when you, i mean if you would if you would yeah. if you just show up now on currentnetwork.com and get it on your screen say oh wow 17-7 another hold by frontier but the story of the game all night long has been garces but they haven't been able to capitalize when they've been in the neighborhood right. rick yeah yes they have 17 but as we've documented could be a lot more and now frontier fresh off a touchdown comes back out with the Flores, well, Ty gonna, Johnson. Counted. Johnson keeps it, gets maybe a yard or two. 
We'll see what kind of adjustments Coach Gass made in the, on the uh, on the break there because that last series, you know, Johnson was killing them on that back door counter tray, set the formation away. Coming back to the short side, he had a uh, it was all Johnson that last series. Second and nine, they gave him a yard. Under a minute to go in this third quarter. Colton Baker breaks out of the huddle right down here below us, the right receiver. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one against Tobias, but we don't think it's going in the air. Garces looks like they're bringing everybody, and they try to, and they do hold down Ty Johnson. We think he better go down, and they finally blow the whistles. They're going to say he actually went down at the 46-yard line, Ty Johnson, but now great it's going to bring up. It sure was a great play by Caden Uribe. Number 77. Hung on, never let him go, did he? Another junior in that Ram lineup. Yep. So after three, 17 to seven, but this football game a long way from being over. We've got one more quarter left. Don't miss it right here on KernHighNetwork.com. Come back right now. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools. Together we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools. Start the fourth quarter here. Titans on a third and 12, but oh boy, the Rams just chew it up, eat it up, and a big, big loss. And to start things off, again, Jimenez was in there with it, and Caden Uribe. So the Titans stall after a score, and they're gonna have to punt the football away as we start this third quarter. Well, have you seen one foot big punt already by Frontier, you might Ooh. see another one here. They got nothing, you know. That Back to receive number two, Daniel Tobias. Clock is against him here. Perfect deep snap. Here's the punt. It's a high one, but not a long one. Tobias takes a look at it and it goes down about the 39 yard line. Independence right now, leading East 21-19. Oh man. How about this? South High School over Foothill, a final, 50 to seven. Highland leads Miramonte, 43-14. Congratulations to the Highland Scots. Golden Valley over West, 25-20. Oh, big game there. North over McFarland, 20 to 14. That's a seesaw battle. BHS pulling away from Stockdale, 28 to nine. Tehachapi and, Ty and Ridgeview tied up at 14 14-all. And Liberty leading Centennial in the Freedom Bowl, 20 to nothing, and a final from our other game, 50 to 15. Rosamond beats Kern Valley. Fumble, another bad snap. Campbell goes down, loss at the 30-yard line. So they have had some snap issues, bobble issues, and there have been times they've looked really good, and then there's some times they have not looked very good at all. And uh, times they've looked very bad is the second half. Yeah, they, they really haven't put it together yet here in this. In this. If you're frontier defense, you're loving that. It's second and 18 now. True, as you mentioned, the clock working on them, Rick. It was under duress, had to get rid of it. The Titans were bringing everything. 
This is the time of the game where you really want Isaiah Martin to take control of this game. Time he's going to eat up. I couldn't agree more, Rick. Third and 18, 10 28 to go in the field. He does, and it is broken up by two Titan defenders. It was intended out there for. And Bell is still down, and he's wincing in pain. And up the clock. And tell you what, due to how demonstrative he seemed to be at the end of that play, boy, better to speak one of them efficient. And. It's going to bring up a fourth and long, but as you, to your point, Rick, the, the Rams really know out of that whole series, uh, which is that you lose Isaiah Bell. Looks like he's going to be okay. Just fourth and 18. You know, here's it. Here it is. It's I might know his daughter in this in this voice of the Bakersfield Jam. They sent me D League and yeah. Turner brought you. They sent me to Utah to call the, I was like the, for the showcase. What are you doing? Aren't you calling a game? I'm like, yeah, but aren't, isn't that what it's all about these days? Can't you, can't you? Bentley letting everybody know during the game exactly what we're doing. That was obviously where everything was headed, but asking Coach Van Horn to describe Some certain tech, things, right? Tech, technical. Got a timeout on the field. You were, you've been coaching at every level here professional for the Bakersfield Blitz, uh, uh, a staple for the Arena Bowl game for all of our high school kids, coach at Liberty, coach at the East, coach everywhere. You know, right now, both coaches, I think, dealing with some frustration as we get in this fourth quarter. They are. They are. You know, neither one, they they start getting on track and something falls apart, and especially guards us the second half. So first and 10, Frontier with 10-16 to go here in this fourth quarter. They start off in the air, ball bobbled. And it was Montano, just a hair underthrown. And as Tom Myers talked that to us was, at halftime, he could throw the football. He could spin he can, it. He can. That was actually going to be a flea flicker. He was going to catch that Ooh. Pit, and, and pitch it. You saw Johnson trailing that play, and, and he was going to pitch it back to Johnson, which was a great call, but not well executed. Coaching staff, about eight feet to my left up here for Frontier. And the Garces coaching staff below us in the side of the announcer's booth. So we're watching this in act. We're watching all the action behind the scenes as well. So 10-12 left in this fourth quarter. Titans trail by 10. 17-7 Garces. Montano fakes the handoff. Wants to throw again. He's in trouble and he goes down. Thrown for a loss. Isaac Jimenez. Huge loss all the way back to the 20-yard line. 22-yard line, so it's going to bring up a third and about a 23 marker for the Titan offense, and it looks like Montano's dinged up there. Coach Bandy's going to have to kind of just get the call into him from about 15 yards away. Didn't even want him to run to the sideline. Just said, I'll give it to you right now. You can see the urgency is kind of set in for Frontier because they've got Montano in now, and they're starting to open it up a little bit with the passing game. I think they're done with the Wildcat. They better get this play off. They better get this play off. Oh, they just did. Montano struggles, gets out of the pocket, wants to throw, better get rid of it, throws across his body, and it's caught at the 30-yard line. A good catch, and boy, he gathered up a ton of people. Colton Baker makes a catch in traffic. Ball gets to the 30, but that's going to bring up fourth and five. And with all this time left, Coach Bandy's going to have to put, punt the football away. Again. Boy, this Garces defense. I think if, you know, at their award ceremony at the end of the season, Coach Gass better have a nice paragraph or two prepared for this defense as a squad because we could go down and call off one or two names, but they're all involved in this great effort. Punt for the Titans. Another boomer, another high one, not a ton of yardage. Tobias drops the football, and the Titans wow. recover. These punts, Rick, are not going long, but they're going up high, and they're wobbling on the way yeah. down. And Tobias, normally extremely sure-handed. Yeah. You could tell his footwork was a little off. He stumbled a little bit, and you knew he was going to have some problems there. 
Well, the coaching staff for Chris Bandy's Titans now trying to really get these Titans to get pumped up and believe in himself. You can see some of the assistant coaching staff saying, let's go, guys. First and 10 from the Rams, 41. A little bit of kick in their step now. They take the snap. Montagna wants to throw. Fires out to the side. Oh, they were going for the pick six, and that was Tobias again. <laughs> it went right through his fingertips. Tobias read it and would have been gone. Again, the flea flicker. You saw Johnson coming, trailing the play. It was a little five-yard hitch, and he was going to pitch it back to Johnson. Oh, Tobias broke on it, and I think he was looking at the open field in front of him. Woo, second and 10. Montano on a keeper. Oh, no, it's That's Johnson. Johnson, sorry. Johnson on the keeper, my fault. 34 yard line, gain of seven. It's gonna bring up third and three. Biggest third down of the game coming up with eight and a half to go in the fourth quarter. 17-7's the score, Titans trail by 10, but here's an opportunity. Pick up a first down and, and, and really make this thing interesting. Big play coming up, we got about a third and four. Plenty of time to still score. Take it down to 17-14 score. You got plenty of time for an onside kick. But this is the play here. Here it is from the Wildcat. They go to Johnson. He's got to pick up three yards, and I don't know if he's going to do it. First hit with Steve Rowland. Oh, he fights for some more. And at, coming in at the very end was Nick Sill. Nick Sill was our Tony's Pizza player of the game a few weeks ago. Picked up the fumble and a rumble 60 yard for the game winning touchdown, or the lead at least, that they don't get it. It's fourth and three. Oof. So fourth and three, Rick, here's a big one. Nobody jumps. It's going to be Johnson. Nothing doing. I don't Nothing think he doing. got it. I don't think he got it. They stopped him well short of the first down. Not even close. So a great opportunity there has gone awry for the Titans. They picked up a fumble at about the 37-yard line and were unable to pick up that first down. So now the question exists. Will the Rams come out and keep on slinging it and flinging it, or are they going to try to work this thing down? Well, I think they kind of, like I said, they were kicking themselves that last series. I think you're going to see more Isaiah Martin this series. Oh, another dangerous snap. Campbell had to stick his hand out to get it and give it to Martin. And another loss of like six yards on the play. I think Frontier Ooh. now can start start incorporating some run blitzes now. I don't. I think they think Garces isn't going to throw the ball anymore. They want to run that clock down. They want to feed Isaiah Martin and burn that clock. Second and fifteen. Campbell makes the call but there's some movement there by julian hernandez I want to thank current schools federal credit union pav solar and communications premier lighting the united states army raymond's trophies and of course tony's pizza will announce our tony's pizza player of the game at the conclusion titan tom wanted in on that he wanted to weigh in on who he thought tony's pizza player of the game might be second and 20. You might see him take a shot with Austin back there. But they bring everybody the at it, and a pitch to Martin. Oh. Martin bubbles the football. Oh, my gosh, he's bobbling it around. Another big loss, so not crisp at all. Campbell pitched it to Martin, but Martin stopped running. He was going to cut back up field before he even had the football, so the true direction of the pitch option is to the sideline, but the minute the ball was in the air, Martin looked like he wanted to come right back against back, the right grain. Back. Bobbled it. Now they're in big trouble. You know, I got a feeling these second half stats are going to be negative for Garces. I would agree. Yeah. I think they've been going backwards the last three drives. Fortunately, that clock is still running. Frontier has two timeouts. 
even though it's a third and 29, we've seen some huge third down distances tonight by both teams. Another third and 29. Campbell lets it fly. Oh, and it's dropped wow. right across the middle, and Heber dropped it. Still would have had another 18 yards to pick up the first down, but ball dropped, and now we're going to see J.J. Flores come out and stand no further than the 50-yard line. I can't, I can't imagine he's going to go too much past the 50. Wow. Okay, 49 right around there. Frontier again going to get great field position in this second half. Dallas, oh, has to come up to get the punt. Not a good one, and it could a take bounce. a decent a bounce. bounce. It goes sideways. Better get and there. Better get there. Woo. <laughs> JJ that Flores. Ball if, if that would have ball would have taken a good bounce for Flores. And that's exactly why he ran past that. He ran at that he, thing full he, speed. He said, if that thing bounces up, yeah. I'm gone. It didn't, but very good field position. Ball's going to be at the 44-yard line or 43-yard line of Garces. So 43 yards for a touchdown for the Titans, 5-10 to go. Garces has not scored since early in the second quarter. And now with 5-10 to go, it is all on this frontier offense and Ty Johnson stands here at about the 37-yard line. Clock stops. Only six seconds run off on that play and picks up eight yards. So I don't know if Garces is really in a prevent defense, but didn't come at the quarterback hard at all on that one. Little change up there for Frontier. They've got uh, both Flores and Johnson in the backfield, kind of a two-headed monster there. Got the speed with one and got the power with the other. Quarterback Dusty Montano. Oh, and he slips and falls, Flores does. Loses his footing, loses a couple yards on that run. So we're under five minutes to go here. We're at Frontier. Julian on camera. Bentley running the show for us via the internet at KHSD Athletics. Our director, producer, Antonio right next to us. Rick Van Horn is next to me. I'm Vance Palm. Four and a half left here in this fourth quarter. They want to throw. Montano looks, throws down the field, and oh, it's oh. dropped by J.J. Flores. A nice, nice pass. Oh, gosh. Would have been a first down at the 15-yard line, but he drops it, and that was a nice pass by Montano. Oh, boy. Isaac Bowers, number 11, tried to undercut that. Kind of misplayed it a little bit, but, uh, oh, excuse me, Nick Sill. Oh, that would have been a big first down. Whew. Now all of a sudden it's well, fourth and six. that might have been a touchdown there. Now it's fourth and six. Two receivers way out to the left side. Montano double might be a play, double, pass. double pass. I think big it is going to be a double in, pass. Big he floats it out there, and it's, oh, it would have oh. been there. They went to the big tight end, and he was open, and he had beat his man. Shelton had beaten Bowers, but the double pass too far. So Coach Bandy bringing it all out right now. 420 on the clock and the Rams will get the football back. Well, the way it's been going, Frontier will get the ball back before this game's over. Garces has been going backwards the last three drives. And when I say backwards, I'm talking minus 30 last series, minus 20. Third and 29. Yeah. Martin on Campbell's left hip. Hard count on everybody, and then it ends up being Austin Giggy that jumps. And Joseph Campbell, a little bit frustrated himself, goes over, looks at the coaches, gets the play. And now we're already minus five in this series. Twenty-four total points scored. Seventeen in the first half by Garces. Seven in this fourth quarter by the Titans. Frontier wants to come after Campbell on a first and fifteen. Do they? Campbell pitches to Martin. Martin in trouble. Nowhere. And a flag on the play.
And that is a hold wow. on Garces. So <laughs> now they're minus they 20. Continue to go back. And it was that quick pitch to Martin that really, I don't think the holding really affected well, anything about it. Didn't have uh -huh. a lot of room to go anyway, Rick. Very surprised. This is you're running that option. You've got a tight ball game. You're running the option on your side of the field. You're not. Doesn't look like they're very comfortable running it. And then you run it to the quarterback's left hand when he's a right hander. A lot of a lot of problems with that play. This time they go right up the seam. And it's Martin still running strong. Wow, look at the fight on this young man. Gets to about the 39-yard line. Look out here, look out here, look out here. Things getting a little chippy here. Second and, uh, let's say 10. Second and 10, 349 and counting. Ball right at the 40 here. But the big number I'm looking at is that clock. It continues to tick here. And Garces, up 10, 17 to seven, really kind of masters of their own domain right now, even though they're on the road. Campbell gets everybody out of the huddle. He's running out of time. He better do it quickly. He gets up behind center, bobbles the ball into Martin's hand. Wow, that ball was bobbling around. And now, stays third and 10, stays third and 10. Getting chippy down there. A lot, going, is, on, lot going on after each play. And Cisneros getting spoken to by his coaching staff, and he's saying, look, it's not me. They're, they're getting me at the end of each snap. So a timeout called by Coach Bandy. We'll take it with you here on CurrentHighNetwork.com. Back in a moment. Garces up by 10, 255 left in the fourth quarter. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together, we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together, we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together, we have something special. Fourth and eight, Garces has to punt. Not a bad one, but some time, and it's gonna be caught by Flores at the 27. A nice move, still on his feet. And the whistle hasn't blown yet, and it does at about the 44-yard line. So J.J. Flores, who for a minute there, this Titan crowd thought, uh-oh, here we go. Yep. So 2.41 to go. They trail by 10. Frontier has the football at their own 44-yard line. They're going up against Garces. Garces 2-1 and one in league. Frontier 1-2 and two in league. And... We hear that BHS pulled away from Stockdale. Liberty pulled away from Centennial. So that big matchup looms next Friday night. Frontier has Centennial next week. A neighborhood grudge match. Garza's secondary is loosened up a little bit. Big sack in the backfield, and again, Isaac Jimenez starting to become the front runner for the Tony's Pizza player of the game. I see where you're going. I see where you're going. Well, uh, you start yeah. to see the sack after sack after sack, and almost all of them are yeah. number nine. Max Colbertson had a great game as well. Draw play to Johnson. Johnson can't get to the sidelines. Roughed up out there by some Garces Rams. Another big hit by Brian Pantoja.
under two to go here. Titans gonna have to do something real special here. It is third and 14, or third and 15. Montano in the backfield, dropped straight back. He's flushed out of the pocket, over here to the near side, throws, and it is, oh. should have been picked off have by been. Isaac Bowers. I'll tell you what, Garces is dropping a lot of footballs tonight. <clears throat> That's a game clincher right there. Pretty That's much. You can't drop interceptions like that. The junior, 6'2", 180, would agree with you. He would say, I concur, Coach Van, Hern, yeah. Van Horn. Should not have dropped that. So fourth and 15, and the Titans need 15 and a half yards to keep this thing going. They had a wheel route on the top on the far side, but that's an actual, that's a long throw. Garces brings four, oh. and Roland almost gets the sack, a pass play, and it is incomplete, and there are no flags on the field, and that means the Garces offense is going to come out with 134 remaining here in the fourth quarter, and I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Well, Frontier's got two timeouts left, so. Quite true. You might see Campbell go under under center here. Maybe put Tobias in, as a fullback, the lead blocker for Isaiah. Austin in the backfield, way in the backfield, making sure nothing goes awry. Campbell just going to hand the ball off to Martin. Austin's going to come through and do a little shoving. And... No timeout called by Coach Bandy. 17-7 is where the score is most likely going to stay. And Garces going to move to 3-1. and one. Titans will go to 1-3 and three here in league. And sets up some pretty interesting scenarios next Friday night. It sure does. It sure does. I formation again. Austin behind Martin. Campbell. He's going to wait, look at the back judge. The hand signal start. Campbell, again to Martin. Martin busts through, and a flag, and I think that's going to be an incidental face mask. Didn't look like an egregious one, but the clock stops for a second. First down, but there's a flag. It'll be on Frontier, I believe. Illegal helmet contact is what Titan Tom is saying below us. So they will move the ball forward. I can't, I can't fathom that Garces is really going to take any kind of shot other than, you know, look, if they hand the ball off to Isaiah and he gets yeah. a TD, he does. You never know, 44 seconds remaining here in this fourth quarter. Campbell will get under center and wait, I believe. He doesn't seem to be directly behind center, but he'll wait for a second. And now Joseph Campbell's gonna take a knee and that's gonna do it. A 17 to seven victory for the Garces Rams was not the prettiest of football games, but a win is a win. And we will come back after this break and discuss our Tony's Pizza player of the game. Garces comes on the road and wins a big one against Frontier. 17-7 the score. And it sets up for some unique scenarios next week with BHS Liberty playing and Garces playing Stockdale. So it's going to be an interesting night of football next Friday. We'll be back right after this short break on KernightNetwork.com. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. 
Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shafter. It's wicked cool. It's it's our Welcome back everybody. Second to the last week is in the books for the KernHighNetwork.com's live exclusive coverage of high school sports here in Kern County. Vance Palm, Rick Van Horn, Antonio, Julian, uh, Todd, thanks for everything tonight, guys. Great, great job here at Frontier. Garces comes out with a win. They Big go to win. Three Big and win. one on the road, three and one, and they win this game against a good Frontier team with really a sputtering offense for most of the game. But still, a win is a win. Rick, our Tony's Pizza player of the game with not a lot of discussion during the break, Isaac Jimenez. We're going to give it to Isaac Jimenez, Tony's Pizza player, Tony's Pizza player of the game. Your thought on, on a couple of things. First of all, our Tony's Pizza player of the game. In, uh, he was in Frontier's backfield the whole night. Yeah. And they did a great job, those four guys, uh, keeping uh, Montano on the run, keeping him dirty. Uh, Jimenez did a great job. He's the lucky recipient of them having to worry about all of his teammates, so he gets a lot of the tackles, <laughs> or vice versa. We gave it to Nick Sill a couple weeks ago. Could have given it to Roland as well, so that Garces defense continues to be the story for this yeah. Ram team. They have weapons on offense, but again, defense stepping up and doing a nice job. Coach Bandy, Frontier, having to take another tough one on the chin yeah. here at 1-3. and three. Yeah, and they're going to be playing for pride next week, you know, against uh, neighborhood school Centennial. Uh, but again, like we said earlier, these two teams may end up playing again in a couple weeks in the playoffs. They're both in Division II. Uh, Frontier was ranked number three in that division. Garsh is ranked number seven, so you may see some, some movement in those Division II rankings. Thank you to everybody at the Kern High School District. Appreciate all of your great support making sure this happens. And, of course, right now on camera, I want to certainly thank Kern School's Federal Credit Union, United States Army, Paths Solar and Communication, Premier Lighting, Raymond's Trophies, and, of course, Tony's Pizza. For everybody involved in making this happen tonight, uh, we hope you enjoyed October football. Next Friday night, we're going to have two more games in November football. And then from there, we go into the playoff hunt. So hope you enjoyed this one tonight. Garces with a big win, 17-7 over Frontier. Everybody have a great, safe weekend. Good night and God bless. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shafter. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your program. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that 
they had the chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed.